Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench and this week we're going to talk about Quick Tips Volume 6. All right guys, we have nine quick tips for you this week. Normally I like to have around 10, but two of them didn't really pan out like I thought they would. All right, so our first comes from John Colombo. Thank you. And that is fit to view is actually a shift question mark. Perfect. I like that one. It's quick. All right. Number two, I was asked why After Effects doesn't have a slip tool like editing programs do, but it actually does have one. An alternate use for the pan behind tool, if you hit Y, pull that up, is actually slip. So you can slip it on a layer. So you can see we can go through. Your in and out points on your layer, though, have to be shorter than the actual duration of the clip. Otherwise, you can't slip anything, obviously. Another thing that's interesting is that if you actually select a property like scale here and you slip, the keyframes will slip with it. So keep that in mind. All right, number three. I picked this tip up while watching one of Devil Cube's tutorials. It's another use for the pan behind tool. So if you have like an anchor point that's off center like this, if you actually hold command and double click on this, it'll center the anchor point in the middle of the layer. It's great for doing that on text too, especially if you're gonna stack things and you want them to be in the center. So you can just double click and then tell it to go back to 540 and 960. So even though this was horizontally centered, apparently it's not exact. So doing that will find the perfect center for it. What's great is that if you want to add something else to this, like by overlord now, you want to add a little bit more to that. You can go back, do it again. And now you're back in the center again and it's perfect. And also this is not a paid plug. Overlord is freaking awesome. I'm going to leave a link to that down below. I've used it for most of the graphics in this project just to make them really quickly in illustrator and then just push them right to after effects into a layer. It's amazing. I tweeted earlier that this is going to change my life, and that's probably true. So make sure you check that out. Maybe that can be your 10th tip. All right, so number four, I figured this one out when I was working on some ribbon boards, and I was trying to center things between other things, and everything was shifted, and I didn't really have a way to numerically center things. So I thought of using the macOS screen capture utility to make a box that I can use to compare sizes with. If you're on Windows, you can just drag out a shape or something like that. Basically, I just hit Shift-Command-4, so then I just drag a box out, and I can bring it to the other side to see about how much I have to move this over. While I'm still holding Command, I just hit escape and it cancels it. So we don't actually capture anything. Then we can bring up our gen tool, click on lines right here, select that, move it over to about where we think it should be. Do it again. Let's use it to the points this time. And we're pretty close. You can move it back like one. And we're centered up. All right, so next one, I think this is a new feature in CC 2018. I don't remember seeing this before. But there's a couple of new marker things that are pretty cool. And the first one is if you want to delete all these markers, you can right click on one of the markers and hit delete all markers. But what's really cool is if you use an audio comp like I do for your timing and everything, instead of just an audio layer, you can have your comp markers inside there. And if you choose to like move this one over here, or maybe this uh, 4B becomes scene 05 and this thing becomes scene 06 now. If we close this up or just go back here, we can't really do anything by coming back into here as far as I know. But all we do is just add a dummy marker on that really quickly, right click on it, and then say update markers from source, and it replaces it with all the markers that we need. So now you can see we have 05, 06, and everything. So when your client makes a script change, you can use that to update your markers. What's extra cool is if you kind of do like I do, where you still want to have the old ones, all you gotta do is duplicate it and then update on that one. So then you have a difference between the markers that you did. So if you're just retiming things around, you can see what the difference is between them. In the past, I drag a new audio comp in, and I just had to make sure that the timing was right between them, and this is so much better. So I'm glad that's in there. All right, the next one. 06 tiempo. Para los gringos, that means time. So let's hit command and let's click on our time over here. So now we're in seconds instead of frames. And I saw somebody want to go to like 10 seconds and they were doing like 10 colon zero zero to get to 10 seconds. But there's a better trick I learned a long time ago and it works pretty much anywhere you can put a time in an After Effects. Instead of doing that, you can just put 10 period. It takes you right to it. If you want to do like 10 and five frames, do 10.5 or 10.20. If you need to go to minutes or whatever, it's just like 1.10.20. That's more than we have in our comp, but you see it works. All right, so let's go to the next one. This one's kind of handy. If you notice, I have no text on screen because it's been positionally moved out of the way, except I'm using text animators now instead of using position. This way you can change the layout of your text without possibly having to redo the animation. So if we play this, yep, that's a ludicrous joke in 2017. You're welcome. All right, so say now we don't want these centered like in the actual whole comp. We want them centered to this gray part. So we can just go here, click them, bring them down. And we don't have to worry about where our keys were or anything like that. It still animates in the same way, but now you can move things around pretty easily. All right, the next one. 
When I was looking for something earlier, I actually discovered that you can change keyboard shortcuts now. It's a 2018 feature. It's not in 17. You just go to edit keyboard shortcuts. It brings up this whole crazy thing and now you can change them. So that's that. All right, number nine. Another 2018 feature is that if we have shy layers, like I've shied a lot of these things, you can see now we have a thicker part here. And that's to indicate that there's layers collapsed in here. So if we actually like duplicate this Kilroy and we bring them down here, you can see the gap is now there. And if we unshy everything, it's at the bottom. If you put it in the middle, same thing will happen. You'll have bars on both sides. So that's pretty awesome. I like that. It's a good use of UI in here. All right, guys, that is Quick Tips 06. If you have any comments, questions, or tips, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. I know I need to keep up with it too. All right, guys, as always, I am Joe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.